Ah, that the judge, man, you weird. By virtue of the powers vested in me as Grand Master of the Order of Distinction of the Republic of Liberia, do you ever confer upon you the color of state in the most vulnerable order of the knighthood of the pioneers? Where there's a sense of dignity in the glory of the Almighty. Uh -huh. Accept my congratulations. I'm delighted to be in this historic city of Monrovia today. And, and happy to be the guest of the brotherly people of Liberia and of her president, my good friend, His Excellency George Manawea. At the nation's 176th Independence Day celebration. My association with Liberia goes back to the, various, the very earliest days of my youth as I went to the same prep school in England as several young Liberians who came to be prominent citizens of this country like Hilary Dennis, Eddie Dunn, the late George Williams, and the late Harry Greaves. Monrovia in those days was a very vibrant city, and I'm very pleased to be back here again in a city which I have to say is regaining its pride of place as one of the most vibrant cities in West Africa. <laughs> on behalf of the government and people of Ghana, on the occasion of Liberia's 176th Independence Day celebration, I congratulate warmly President George Weir, the government and people of Liberia on this momentous achievement. Indeed, if there's any country in West Africa that has shown resilience and the will to persevere in the face of numerous challenges and obstacles, there is no better example than Liberia. And this is worthy of high commendation. Furthermore, Liberia has the great distinction of being the only nation on the continent that has never suffered foreign colonization. Ghana and I are deeply grateful for the award by President Weir of the honor of the color of state which I would wear and treasure for the rest of my life. Thank you. Before spending eight years in the political wilderness as leader of Ghana's opposition, I had the privilege and honor of serving in the government of the outstanding Ghanaian statesman, the second president of Ghana's Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajekun Kufo. As Ghana's Minister for Foreign Affairs, between 2003 and 2007, and on behalf of President Kufo, who was in that period Chairman of our regional body ECOWAS and of our continental body, the African Union, I, as Chairman of the Mediation and Security Councils of both the regional and continental bodies, was a leading participant in several efforts made at ensuring peace in Liberia. Intense negotiations ensured finally the coming into effect of the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement, which as its name signifies, was negotiated and signed in Accra. Indeed, Accra became briefly then a microcosm of, Li of Monrovia as virtually the entire Liberian political class resided there. This agreement, 
established a post-war two-year transitional government, which by consensus had the late Charles Judy Bryant as interim chairman. The foundation for lasting peace in Liberia was laid by the ultimately peaceful departure of former President Charles Taylor from office and the country, and by the conclusion of the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement, the successful implementation of which brought about the election of the first female leader in the history of the continent, Her Excellency President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, and subsequently made possible a peaceful transition of power to President George Weir. After two terms in office of President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, it is appropriate that next month, the month of August, will commemorate the 20th anniversary of the signing of the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement. It was imperative at the time and still is that Ghana involves herself in seeking the peaceful resolution of regional conflicts, resolutions that invo invariably sought to promote democratic outcomes. For we believe that the more Ghana gets involved in enhancing peace and democracy within our region, the more we guarantee ours at home. Ghanaian diplomacy was fully supported by Ghanaian arms, such as the national commitment to the peace and security of Liberia. Ghanaian troops formed an important part of the contingent that has helped to maintain the peace in post-conflict Liberia. These interventions represent positive chapters in Ghanaian history hence my understandable feeling of pride. Excellencies, giving your people hope for a violence-free, fair, and transparent election, the theme for this celebration, imposes a sacred responsibility on each and every Liberian to contribute their quota to the construction of a happy and prosperous Liberia, in which all Liberians particularly the youth, the women, and the vulnerable in society, will have equal opportunities to realize their potential and build lives of dignity. That is when the nation's independence will continue to be meaningful. Giving our people hope means you must always bear in mind the words of the off-cited maxim, which says, and I quote, that that which unites us is far greater than that which divides us, unquote. So whether you are Basa, Gio, Jabo, Pele, Kru, Vai, Mandingo, Mende, Congo, or from any other ethnic group, I appeal to you to look beyond from where you come. You must deepen the cohesion amongst you and promote a spirit of reconciliation for the sake of your beloved country, its progress and prosperity. You are Liberians first and foremost, and I urge you to wear that accolade with pride. If there has to be a fight amongst you, that fight must be to work together to provide the Liberian people with a good quality of life. We must start, as you're doing, with investing in our children and young people, as the surest way to guarantee a prosperous future. We must transform the structure of our economies, but essentially raw material producing and exporting economies into value adding economies. And we must promote business friendly environments that reward creativity and enterprise and those who play by the rules. All of us in the West African region of ECOWAS, of which Liberia is a proud member, are today preoccupied with the need to free the region of the terrorist insurgency that has engulfed Mali, Burkina Faso, parts of Niger and Nigeria, and is threatening the peace and stability of the coastal nations such as Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin, and my own nation of Ghana. It is incumbent that in our generation we all stand together to defeat this menace and guarantee the peace and stability which are essential to the rapid economic development of our area, the surest way 
to banish poverty in our time. In the same vein, we must reiterate our commitment to democratic governance in the ECOWAS space and reject all unconstitutional changes of government. <laughs> Liberia, since the coming into force of the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement, has shown exemplary leadership in the organization of free, credible, and transparent elections. I am confident that the impending presidential and legislative elections due in October will follow in this noble tradition. And the peoples of ECOWAS, especially the peoples of Ghana, wish you well in this regard. On this day, there's nothing you can do better to pay homage to Hillary Teague, Samuel Benedict, Elijah Johnson, Amos Herring, John Day, Anthony William Gardner, Richard Murray, Joseph Prout, and the many others who signed the Declaration of Independence, than to dedicate the 176th Independence Anniversary to working hard for the peace, progress, and prosperity of Liberia and the consolidation of her democracy. We do not have to look far back into history to see that a stable period of democratic constitutional governance coupled with intelligent management of the economy leads to prosperity. I believe in Liberia's immense potential for greatness. I believe that a stable democracy in Liberia can help unleash the energies of the dynamic people of Liberia to drive the transformation of the Lone Star of Africa. I wish you all a happy 176th anniversary and God's blessing. May God bless Liberia, Mother Africa, and us all. <laughs>